Marta Kauf, Emmy and Golden Globe winning television writer, producer, showrunner. Along with David Crane, she created Friends, one of the most successful comedy series ever. At the end of its 10-year run, Friends has accumulated 63 Emmy nominations, winning Outstanding Comedy Series in 2002. As part of her production company, OK Good Night, her new series, Grace and Frankie, with Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin, Martin Sheen, and Sam Waterston, will premiere on Netflix on Friday, May 8th. That is quite a cast. Right? Wow. Crazy. How'd you get them together? Luck. Um, you know, honestly, it started as a fluke. I was having lunch with the woman who's the head of television at Skydance Television, who's our studio friend of mine, and we were having lunch, and she happened to mention that Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin want to do television. I thought she meant together. She hadn't. She was just mentioning two names. Called my agent when I got home and said, is it true that they want to do TV together? She said, I don't know. She calls me back 20 minutes later and says, they do now. <laughs> so that's how we got Lily and Jane. And then Martin and Sam, you know, that was a matter of a great casting director and good ideas. And did you like coming back to the comedy wars? Ha <laughs> um, I like coming back to a new kind of comedy where you don't have to, like with sitcoms, you're, you have to, it's a joke a page. You have little, these six and seven minute increments in which you have to tell a story. It's a whole new world. We get a full 30 minutes. We're walking a line between comedy and real where you don't have to have a joke all the time. And it's fantastic. It's so much all fun. Right. Now the two, okay, they want to do a show together. Now who came up with this idea of two wives of two gay guys? Honest? You. My daughter. My daughter is my creative executive. We're sitting in the car. She's good. She's good. This is her idea. She's good. We're sitting in the car talking about, all right, we have Jane and Lily. Now what are we going to do? And she says, what if their husbands fall in love with each other and get married? And that clicked right away, right? Yeah, you immediately. Said. All right. We have a clip of this new series, which uh, pre uh, premieres Friday, May 8th. Grace and Frankie, let's watch. I'm leaving you. And he's leaving you. You're leaving me? Yes. Who is she? Oh, it's not what you think. It's a he. Excuse me? And it's Saul. I'm in love with Saul. You mean you're gay? And this is who you're gay with? This is who I'm in love with. Oh my God. How long has this been going on? Well, it's been, I don't know exactly. 20 well, years. <gasps> You don't think there was a better time to tell us this? Like, say, any time over the last two decades? I'm gonna throw up. I'm so sorry. Why now? We want to get married. Oh. Married? Because we can do that now. I know. I hosted that fundraiser. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's a, that's, this is the odd couple in reverse. A great concept. Yeah, thank you. Then it's got to play out, so who writes it? Who writes it? Uh, um, Howard Morris with whom I wrote the pilot, he and I, and um, 10 other phenomenal, brilliant, interesting writers. We age in, and it's very unusual for a writer's room. We're, the youngest is in their late 20s, the oldest is 60. We have quite a range of, of sexual identity and, and age, and it's fantastic. Do both couples have children? Both couples have children. Jane and Martin, they have two daughters. Um, Lily and Sam have two adopted sons. <laughs> Netflix got involved how? That we got on our hands and knees and begged them to do it. <laughs> no, we, we pitched everywhere in town, but we always felt that it belonged either on pay cable or on Netflix or Amazon, somewhere where you didn't have to. Commercials. Yeah, commercials and tell a story. You can't tell a good story in 21 minutes with any depth. You can tell a story, but it's not going to have any depth. And we really wanted to, like, dig into stuff. All right, from a creative standpoint, was this more fun than Friends? That's a little bit like asking who's your favorite child. Um, more fun? No. That was fun. That was really fun. 
but I was also a lot younger. You know, it's 20 years ago, I had more energy. Um, it was a different time, it was, we were all coming up together. You know, at that time we were all unknowns and we're all moving through it together, so it was incredibly exciting. This is incredibly um, creatively stimulating. And it's thrilling in terms of the kinds of stories we can tell. That's exciting and, and fun. And how about the four of them to work with? Oh my God. I, 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 I hit the lottery with them. They are the consummate professionals. They are elegant. They are smart about what they do. They are collaborative. They're funny. It is a joy to walk on that well, set. Sam is a Shakespearean actor. So. Uh, he's doing yeah. Prospero at Shakespeare in the Park. He's doing The Tempest right now. They're all wonderful people, too. They are all wonderful, kind. Because Lily and, and, and Jane have history. <laughs> yeah, they've been friends for quite a while. They've, they've been friends. Is it true that you don't find yourself funny? You yes, don't think that's you're true. funny? I don't. I don't I don't think of myself as a joke writer. I don't write jokes. I I understand characters, I say things that might be funny for the character, but I'm not a joke writer. That's not what I do. And it's partly why I wanted to move away from the sitcom. This new climate of TV uh, with no ratings, Amazon, Yahoo, Netflix, the atmosphere must be better to work in. You don't have to grab the Nielsen's in the morning. And because of that, and because you're not dealing with advertisers, you don't have to change what your show is in order to please them. So, you know, the networks all go for 18 to 35. That's what they want. This show has nothing to do with 18 to 35, except that maybe you would like to learn about these people or it's a fun show, but it's not, we're not gearing this towards them. And when you're on any kind of a network that doesn't have commercials, you can do the show that you envision. Texaco is not going to complain about this line about gas. That is right. That is exactly right. So you have a freer atmosphere. It is a freer atmosphere. That's why I asked. It's more fun then. I would think it's freer. Well, you know, uh, and I don't know how much I'm allowed to say here, but I assume... You can say anything you um, want. Who, what network is going to talk about vaginal dryness? <laughs> you know, they're just not going to do it. There are so many women who've been marginalized after a cert in certain point in their lives. After your 50s, you don't exist. So those were the things we wanted to dig into, and you can't dig into those unless you can also dig into the things like vaginal dryness, because that's part of the experience. And the ability to have the, the open forum to go into anything we want um, is, is liberating, and you're right, fun. I would say thrilling, thrilling. Also, the emergence of gay rights makes this possible. You couldn't have done this 20 years ago, could you? 20 years ago, we had a gay character on our show in the second episode. We had a gay wedding on our show. We had, you know, yeah, the you issues. From a, the lead wouldn't be gay. The lead mm. would not be gay. Mm. You're right. One of the leads would not be gay. You're absolutely right. The first right. gay was Billy Crystal, right? On soap. soap. Right. Um, and that was that was a big deal. And certainly Will and Grace changed everything. Did the men have any hesitancy about playing gay? Smart, smart hesitancy. Their hesitations had to do with they wanted to know that we're playing it for real, that we're not going to stereotype them. And these are two very, very elegant men. You bet. And, and they're elegant actors. And, and they heterosexual. didn't want it and they're heterosexual, and they didn't want to cheapen it in any way. So one of the surprises in the show is how much you care about their relationship as the episodes move on. When we first conceived of it, they were the villains. But they're so lovable. And the kids come into play. And the kids come into play. Gracie and Frankie will premiere Friday, May 8th, on uh, Netflix. We're on every week, right? No. Uh -uh. All 13 are on from day one. Oh, that's the way they do it now, That's right? the way you they do it. You, if you want. Six and, and then, a half hours, done. And how do you decide if there'll be another 13? I don't decide. Netflix decides. How do they and what decide? what do they base it on? You know, because they don't, have, they don't deal with numbers, their thing is not how many people watch it in the first week or the first two weeks. They want to know how many people stay with it or use it as a forum to, oh, I forgot how much I love Martin Sheen. I'm going to look at a movie that Martin Sheen is in. Or I watch a few episodes of this, and then I think, ooh, 
Jane Fonda, wasn't she in some Western? And then they look up Jane Fonda and they stay in Netflix. Netflix. That's what they want. There's a method so, to their madness. There is a very <laughs> clear method to their madness. Yeah. What did you do when Friends <clears throat> ended? Crawled into a hole for about three months just to recuperate. And then um, decided that it was time to reinvent myself. So I did two documentaries. Documentary. Yeah. Complete switch. Complete switch. Did I wanted, you enjoy that? I loved it. I loved it. It was, I'm a storyteller, bottom line. I'm a storyteller. I'm not a joke writer. I'm, I'm a storyteller. So this is just a new way to tell a story without dialogue. What does your husband do? He's a musician. He wrote the theme for Friends. <laughs> and he did the score. He's doing the score for Grace and Frankie. He's a musician. And your daughter is uh, the inventor, the creator. Well, the whole thing. It's adorable, the right? Yeah. My little one th really wants a credit, so she decided she wants to be Sam Waterston's eyebrow comber. <laughs> <laughs> is it going to be a French reunion? Absolutely not. Not absolutely nope, not. Never because it won't happen. Because at the heart of Friends, it was a show about that time in your life when your friends are your family. Once you have a family on of your own, that changes. You no longer need those same relationships. So it would never be satisfying to do it now. So we're not gonna do it. Why I'd rather people ask me the question all the time then disappoint them with the answer and were have you, them see were it. Were you flattered at all the imitators it had that didn't work? You know, I wouldn't say flattered as much as annoyed that, that networks and studios think that anything is a formula. You know, Friends was not a formula. It wasn't, you know, finding all the pieces and, and hoping that that's exactly what they were looking for. It's not just do a show with people who are young and like each other. It's, there's more to it than that. So with the the formulaic nature of these decisions that really annoyed me. Um, but of course, you're flattered that people say, oh, let's use that as our model. It always fascinates me doing all these interviews over all these years and the pitch, the pitch for Friends. Did it work right away? Did the network say, yeah? Yeah, that was the first time we were in a bidding war. It was exciting. Um, yeah, everybody jumped at it. It was, really? yeah, it was very exciting. And the pitch is everything. The pitch is your vision. That's your vision. You have to know in your pitch the line of it's that time in your life where your friends or your family. And in the very, very end of Friends, um, they were all interviewed on the Today Show, and Matt Lauer had somehow gotten a copy of the pitch and read it to the cast. And what was incredibly satisfying for me was that we stayed with our vision. We let the characters grow, but we stayed within what we wanted to do, what we intended to do. Seinfeld, another great example. Yes, Would have heard absolutely. that. I'd like to hear that pitch. Right? <laughs> it was a little different. The pilot was a little different than the rest of the series. I've never seen the pilot. It's called the Seinfeld Chronicles originally. Wow, but that's a great idea. Larry David's yes. a genius. Yes, absolutely. There is no doubt. Do you feel you've been discriminated against as a woman at all? Do they look at you differently than male counterparts? Most, most show runners are male. Yes, 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 and yes. Um, I can remember one time when I was on this set of Friends, and I was... You had two partners who were male. Who were male. I was on the set looking at the quad split, which is all four cameras on one screen, and I had cramps. I was much younger then. Mm -hmm. And I was taking notes. I was bending over, and I was taking notes on the thing I was seeing, and one of the studio executives said to me, Are, there's something wrong. I said, no, no, I'm fine. I'm taking my notes. He goes, no, really, what's the matter? You don't look well. I said, it's not, I have cramps. And he said, this is why I hate to work with women. And I'm like, I'm doing my work. You don't like that I'm bending over? I mean, what, what's the problem here? I've run into it so many times. A female uh, producer who has a strong opinion is a bitch. A male producer who has a strong opinion is a good producer. That still exists. Absolutely. Absolutely. I run into it all the time. But not on my show. None of that on my show. Because you control it. That's right. And it has to start somewhere. And hopefully there are young writers who are in my room who will one day run shows of their own and realize there's another way to do it. And equal pay still doesn't exist? Equal pay does not exist for the actors. It's a little different in my union because there's a minimum we have to get. Equal respect does not exist. What's going to change? 
Why don't, why don't the Martha Kaufmans make a change? We try. We try, but you know, how do you make a change except within your own experience and the people around you? Um, I mean, there are, there are, I don't want, I'm not a preacher. Um, I'm not an educator. But I fight for what I believe is right within the context of my work. I don't allow any of that. I mean, I, there was a time, there was an awful experience during Friends where it was a very, we had a lot of late nights, and it was a very, very late night, and somehow the writers got on Howard Stern. And Howard, who, you know, he can needle. He loved the show, very supportive of the show. He got the writers to say that the women just serve coffee. I made the writers, when I heard this, I lost my mind, and made them write an apology to every woman who had ever been on that writing staff. Because, I mean, what else can I do? Why did they say that? Because they're, they're boys, and Howard Stern got them going, and they're boys, and they don't think that what they say has any effect on people. They just think they're being sophomoric and... Certain words... This is on the Mensa test. Are male words? Surgeon. Pilot. Lord. What? Lord. Heart attack. If I told you someone out there is having a heart attack, you think it's a man. Huh. Right? Yeah, I would. More women have heart attacks than men. The symptoms are different. The too. Symptoms yeah. are different, but if someone's having a heart attack, you think, you it's, think a it's a man, man. right? Right. The surgeon's coming through the right. door. You... It's a man. A showrunner is coming through the door. It's a man. A producer could be a woman. An executive producer is a man. How are you going to change that bridge? Hire more female showrunners and producers and directors. The directors, the same thing with directors. There is a big skew towards the, the masculine scale with directors just trying to find enough. How many female directors are there? Like 17, uh, you know, <laughs> just not a lot no. who are the ones you immediately think of. Okay. And it's not that there aren't so many of them, so they don't get the same opportunities. So they don't have the reel for me to look at to see what kind of work they do. Give me the definition of a great showrunner. Um, strong vision, <clears throat> collaborative, generous, and democratic. The manager of the team? Camp mother. Uh, control the writers? No. No, the show controls the writers. The show tells you after a while what it is. And the writers have to get on that train. <clears throat> but no, I don't control the writers. I guide them. I, I will walk them down the hallways that I feel we should be in. But the, usually in our room, the one with the most passion wins. When you shoot all the episodes, the, all 13 are done, right? Mm -hmm. How long did it take? It was a year from beginning to end. <clears throat> it's a year from Like a the, movie? Yes, because we did, you know, we had the, the, the time with just the writers before That's we had the cast. 13 hours, or 13 and a half hours. half hours. And then we started shooting in August. We finished in November, but post went all the way till March. So it's a long haul. You're a great lady, man. Oh, I thank salute you. Your man. Thank I, see, you. I said, man. So nice. I salute you, man. <laughs> I salute you too, lady. <laughs> I've never been a. F I've never. I've. O I've worked for women. I've always respected that. I want to thank my guest, Martha Kaufman. Make sure you watch her new Netflix comedy series. I can't wait to see it. Gracie, Grace, and Frankie. It starts Friday, May eighth. And remember, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. I'll see you next time.